Hi everyone, today I will propose an approach to resolving the ambiguities that arise in diffusion tractography due to the presence of multiple axon populations per voxel. I have no conflicts to declare. Despite the fact that the signal-to-noise ratio and the resolution of diffusion MRI have improved dramatically over the past decade, allowing us to obtain very accurate estimates of orientation distribution functions, tractography still gets things wrong. That's because spatial resolution is still somewhere in the order of a millimeter. Hence, we often have more than one axon population per voxel, and different configurations of these axon populations can give rise to very similar ODFs. These three examples of a blue and an orange axon bundle in a voxel all result in an ODF similar to this. When a tractography algorithm reaches this voxel, it doesn't know which of the ODF peaks to follow because it doesn't know which of the three configurations on the left is true. As a result, it has to make an arbitrary choice, and this inevitably leads to errors, even if the ODF is very accurate. In fact, this ambiguity would persist even in the presence of infinite SNR and infinitesimal angular resolution, suggesting that this is not a problem that will be solved by better data alone. Recently, we assessed the accuracy of diffusion orientation estimates ex vivo using polarization-sensitive optical coherence tomography, or PSOCT, a modality that relies on the biofringence of myelin to obtain direct measurements of axonal orientations at microscopic resolutions without the nonlinear slice-to-slice -slice distortions that are typical of histological methods. You can read all about it in the recent paper by Robert Jones in NeuroImage. One of our findings is that very high B values do not contribute substantially to the accuracy of diffusion orientation estimates, suggesting that perhaps current ODF-based methods may not be taking full advantage of the information content in those high B values. The question then is, can we bypass the ODF and work directly with the diffusion signal to take full advantage of its information content? And can we use our ground truth microscopic scale optical imaging data not only to assess the accuracy of existing diffusion methods, but to engineer the next generation of methods? Today I will propose a path towards doing that, and I will illustrate it here in 2D without loss of generality. Consider these three examples of fiber configurations in a voxel. Let's number the edges of the voxel, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now consider a 4x4 matrix that tells us if each pair of edges in this voxel are connected to each other. In the example on top, 1 is connected to 2 and 2 is connected to 3. In the middle, 1 is connected to 3 and 2 is connected to 4. And at the bottom, only 2 is connected to 3. We'll call this the local connection matrix or LCM of the voxel. These three fiber configurations have very similar ODFs, but very different LCMs. And in fact, if we know the LCM of the voxel, the ambiguity is resolved. Let's say that we arrive at this voxel from edge 2. If we have the LCM on top, we know that we should turn towards edge 1 and edge 3. If we have the LCM in the middle, we know that we should go straight through edge 4. And if we have the LCM at the bottom, we should only turn towards edge 3. The question is, can we infer the LCM directly from the diffusion MRI signals? I will propose a path towards doing that. Let's call this method tracked architectures recovered from imaging signals, aka trocaris. And you'll want to be socially distanced by a bit more than six feet to stay safe for this one. Going back to our exivo human brains, we have diffusion MRI data at a mesoscopic scale of 250 microns and direct measurements of axonal orientation vectors from polarization-sensitive OCT at 10 micron resolution. This is a region where fibers descending from the cortex branch into two bundles, the external capsule, EC, and the internal capsule, IC. Ideally, tractography should give us these two bundles, but not give us any streamlines that exit the IC and enter the EC or vice versa. If we're doing this based on the ODF, we have no way of knowing that one of these turns is wrong and the others are correct. If we improve upon this, it'll be an indication that we're moving the dial in the right direction. We collect our diffusion data on a fully sampled Cartesian grading Q-space with a maximum B value of 40,000, roughly equivalent to 10,000 in vivo. We only apply an invertible transformation in FFT to obtain the propagator. We use the axonal orientation vectors from polarization-sensitive OCT to run tractography at the microscopic scale. And now, for every mesoscale diffusion-sized voxel, we can count the microscale streamlines that connect each pair of edges of the voxel. This gives us the ground truth LCM of the voxel. Then this becomes a pattern recognition problem where we want to distinguish between different patterns and the elements of the LCM based on the diffusion data. 
We do this by training a CNN that takes as its input the diffusion propagator at a given voxel, and potentially also at its neighboring voxels, and has as its outputs the elements of the LCM of the voxel. Let's look at what these elements are like. This first heat map shows the element of the LCM that corresponds to left to bottom connections, left to right, left to top, and top to bottom connections. So even though this matrix is a rather crude compression of all the microscale information in the optical data down to the mesoscale of the diffusion voxel, it does contain meaningful features that vary across the sample in a way that captures its overall connectional anatomy. We could refine this representation by dividing each edge of the voxel into multiple segments and extracting a matrix of higher dimensionality than four, in which case it may be possible to discard the ODF entirely and only use the LCM for tractography. However, for now we have this 4 by 4 matrix, so we keep the ODF and we use the LCM to choose which of the ODF peaks to follow, depending on the edge from which we entered the voxel. At the top, you see the ground truth tractography from the polarization sensitive OCT at 10 micron resolution. At the bottom, you see tractography using the diffusion orientations. We see it everywhere in the sample, and I am showing the streamlines that go through a yellow sphere in the external capsule or a green sphere in the internal capsule. This first result is from conventional ODF-based tractography with a 45 degree angle threshold. When we relax that threshold to 75 degrees, conventional tractography shows us more fibers going into the internal and external capsule, but it also shows us more of the false streamlines that take the wrong turn from the internal into the external capsule and vice versa. This is what we get when we use the ground truth LCM from the optical data to choose which ODF peak to follow at each voxel. Here we have not used any angle threshold at all, allowing the tractography to take as sharp turns as it likes. Despite that, we do not see any of those wrong turns. This is what we get when instead of the ground truth LCM from the optical data, we use the LCM predicted from the diffusion data. The results are quite similar as when we use the ground truth LCMs. Of course, here we are training and predicting based on different sets of slices from the same sample. In order for this to generalize across the brain, we will need a much richer training set with data from many different regions. And we are in the process of collecting more of those data sets. Based on preliminary results from four samples so far, using the ground truth LCM from the optical data leads to choosing a different peak than the one that we would choose based on the conventional criterion of minimizing the bending angle anywhere from 22 to 36 percent of the time. This is less pronounced in samples that contain only crossing fibers, which are well modeled by ODFs, and more pronounced in samples that contain other configurations, such as branching fibers. But overall, we find that the ground truth fiber configurations in the white matter disagree quite frequently with what is assumed by conventional tractography rules. Next steps include modifying our PSOCT rate to measure 3D orientations, or alternatively, inferring 3D LCMs from three sets of 2D LCMs, as well as various improvements to the CNN, such as data augmentation, which can range from simple rotations to using the optical data as our starting point to synthesize a broader range of realistic fiber configurations. And I would like to end by thanking my co-authors, as well as the Connectome 2.0 project for partly supporting this work. If you want to do your postdoc with us, working on this and other exciting projects, drop me a line. Thank you very much for your attention.